and I'm here to talk about, talk about APQP, or Advanced Product Quality Planning. Now, what is APQP? Well, APQP really is, an, is a communication method where a customer, for example, like an OE automotive co customer, can transmit information from their product design to the supply chain so that the supply chain can then include all types of considerations and, and evaluations and techniques and so forth to assure that, to the extent possible, that the supplier can assure that the product or process they develop meets or exceeds the requirements that the customer has. Now, APQP is made up of many tools, and many of these tools are required for what we refer, refer to as a PPAP, or Production Part Approval Process. These tools within APQP are structured in such a way and, de and delivered in such a, uh, a way that over the course of a product or process development time, those tools are used to determine which risk elements are concerned, we're concerned with, uh, looking at various different opportunities to improve the design or process for design for assembly, design for manufacturing, the development of special characteristics, and also assuring that the process development activities and the validation of that process essentially meets the expectations of the customer. The whole objective, the primary objective, is to make sure that the product that is being produced meets with the requirements, and in addition to that, it can be manufactured in, a, in accordance with the requirements and specifications so that the customers will be satisfied. Now, APQP, what is it? Essentially, in real terms, it's a way of constructing a plan. Now, here's, here's an example of an APQP plan. Various different tools are put together in five phases of development, actually four with the feedback phase being the fifth one. And by going through these tools in a sequence or linked together, these particular tools provide some inputs and outputs and essentially allow us to evolve the design as we move forward, understanding the risks and then mitigating those risks before an actual failure can occur. In the early phases of APQP, plan and define, we take the voice of the customer and convert it to requirements and specifications. We do various different feasibility analysis. We decide that there may be some uh, feasible processes that can be used. And then if it makes sense from a quality cost and delivery standpoint, we move forward to section two. Section two is design and development of the product. And, and here's where the design engineers and the product engineers are actually working on the actual design itself, trying to get something to work for those particular requirements. Uh, simultaneously or concurrently with section two, section three, which is process design and develop occurs. And so while the design of the product is, is moving forward, the manufacturing engineers assigned to the project also are developing the processes and getting an idea of what the tooling uh, needs to look like to develop, de deliver the product that the design engineers envision. Inside that particular section, section two and section three, resides various tools like design and process FMEA, design for assembly, process flow, and special characteristics development as well as characteristics matrices CPK or SPC and so forth. Many, many things happen within section two and section three. Section four is the product and process validation section. Here's where we run the product for the very first time using the tools and techniques that were developed during section two and three. And eventually, after the end of section four, once we've validated the product is assured or controlled properly, the PPAP or production part approval process takes place submitting our samples to our customers. The fifth section, or the feedback loop, actually occurs during all of the four sections. Anytime I learn something, I want to make sure that I capture it as part of my legacy. Legacy means that I will be able to not have to worry about that the next time, making this process quicker or faster each and every time I go through it. As long as I'm capturing, capturing appropriate legacy in section five, which is the feedback, then I will be able to speed the development of product or process in future product development activities. This is what we call high-velocity product development. 